and welcome to the Word Made Flesh. This is our weekly review of the upcoming Sunday, the Word of God, and how to incorporate it into our daily lives. 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. First Sunday of September. Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend. All kinds of things going on, but yeah. none of that has anything to do with anything. <laughs> no. And really, none of these readings have anything to do with one another. Well, maybe they do. We'll find out. But it's tough. They, they, are not, they are not readings that you are going to be super familiar with. Let's say that. Fair statement. Okay. So diving back, diving into the first reading, we're going to the Book of Wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the philosophical, poetic musings of King Solomon. And what do we got, Jonathan? Who can interpret the Lord? Who actually knows the Lord? And that's pretty much the whole <laughs> reading, right in a nutshell. <laughs> I mean, it really is, it really is th this, this thinking like, the Lord is so great, and you can try hard to figure everything out on your own, but if you try to figure out the stuff of the earth without God, you're not going to know it, and you're going to know him even less. Yeah. And that, I mean, ultimately, I think it comes down to, if we know God through the way he chooses to reveal himself. And thank God for the magisterium of the church that helps guide us to help and discern what he is trying to teach us and what he has shown us through the ages. Because if you're left to your own devices and figuring out what it is, I mean, it, the reading talks about we're just mere mortals with decaying flesh and all this or other yeah, thing. Yeah, it would, it would be like trying to teach a kindergartner algebra. You know, unless you have a mathematical prodigy on your hands, they're not going to be able to understand algebra. Correct. It's just going to be beyond their comprehension. I mean, they're not even going to understand negative numbers at that point. I mean, the, it's going to be that basic. That So, I mean, that's kind of the way it is when we think about God. It's not that he's not knowable or unreasonable because negative numbers and algebra and what these are things that are knowable. Right. And you can learn them but not at that state. And when you compare us to God, we're like kindergartners in a calculus class. <laughs> yes. I mean, really, that's kind of what it's about. So it's just, a, I guess it's kind of that, that humbling sense. It follows upon last week. Everything was about humility. And it's just that realization, have to be humble before the Lord. Excellent. Where does our psalm take us? In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. That we don't rely on ourselves. We have to rely on God. So it, it speaks to just what you and I were talking about. You've got to humble yourself before God because you can't figure it out on your own. Makes sense. And I think you'll, you'd be frustrated if you did. And I know, I know a lot of people when they come you know, for counseling or want to talk about things in spiritual direction or, or confession, many of the struggles that they have, oftentimes it's because they haven't turned them over to God. And then you try, you have to carry all of this weight on your own back, and that doesn't work so well. Just with understanding and all of those things? You can't see the big picture. No. So how do you know where to steer the boat if you can't see where it's going? Okay. Second reading comes from... I don't know how many times we read from this book in, in the church's year, but the book of Philemon... Right. Um, what do we got going on, Jonathan? St. Paul is in prison. Yep. And he is writing to... Philemon. Uh, Philemon, because it's a letter to Philemon. Yep, it is. Um, and he's talking about this slave. Onesimus. Onesimus. Um, and just telling, kind of saying that he's got dignity, that he is also a child of Christ. Um, so maybe hinting that he's become Christian. And that he's no longer to, Philemon is no longer really to look at Onesimus as a slave, but more as a brother in Christ. Yeah, there's a lot of mystery wrapped around this reading. We don't exactly know who Philemon is. We don't exactly know who Onesimus was. <laughs> we don't exactly know what their relationship was. Uh, could Onesimus have been Philemon's slave who ran away? Because the verbs that they use in this words really do speak of a, a fleeing or a running away. So was he arrested then? And then did he become a Christian in prison? We just don't know. But I think what Paul is really getting at is Onesimus is going back to Philemon 
And Paul is encouraging Philemon now to receive him not as a slave, but as a, a fellow co-worker in the gospel, as, as a brother in, in the Lord. So I think it kind of ties in with in their first reading that the things of the world have to take a back seat to the things of God. Oh. You know, that, that he, Paul is trying to say, mm -hmm. you know, you had this earthly relationship with him, but now there's a spiritual relationship, and if you miss that, you miss everything. You like that? I do. It makes sense, and it brings us into the gospel. Let's go to the gospel, St. Luke. Because Jesus is walking along with a bunch of crowd following multitude, him. Multitude. Yeah, great multitude. multitude. And then he's, his first thing he says is kind of something that's a hard teaching, because he says, if you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, you need to hate your family, your brothers, your sisters, your mom, your you know, parents. Um, and some of you will find that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> um but he goes on to multiple instances. He talks about leaving things, carrying your cross. Um, and But I think that first part, you know, leaving your family. Stunning. It's even now, you know, a lot of the teachings like, oh, how can I eat this bread that you say is your flesh? We understand now. Yeah. He's still talking about parents and brother and sister right. the way. <laughs> and that's hard to... What is so? What's he getting at? What's he getting at? He, I think we hear it like three or four times this weekend in this gospel that if you can't do this, you cannot be my disciple. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if the gospel starts out with this great multitude following him, and I think he he's aware of all of these people following him, and I think he just wants to like stop them in their tracks. And say to them, look, people, if you're going to follow me, then you need to be prepared for what is coming. Mm -hmm. In other words, I have to be number one in your life. So if your family gets in the way of me, then they really are something that is to be hated. Like, that's an obstacle. Yeah. You cannot let them get in front of me. If you don't pick up your cross, if you don't embrace the trials and the sufferings that are going to come your way, well, then that's an obstacle. You can't be my disciple. And then his last words to them are really about planning. Right. Like if you're going to build a building or if you're going to go wage war, you better sit down and plan and know that you can handle what is coming before you. And I think he wants to catch these people's attention now before they get to Jerusalem that if you don't know why you're following me, then you need to stop and figure it out. And that makes sense. You don't want to, he doesn't want to drop the bomb on him later where he knows it's going to cost literally everything of the world. Yes. Which is what the, the whole other readings have been leading up to. And you have so, to put the world behind you if you're going to put Christ first. And, you know, we're going under this new building and we've had to go through an, a meticulous process over years of saying, do we have all the materials? Do we have the funding necessary? Because yeah. otherwise we will look foolish. Planning a building <laughs> project is not an overnight thing. You, you do exactly. it for and so, a long time studying. Do you know what you're getting yourselves into? Because this is what is going to be asked of you later. Yes. Yes. And, and that's, that's, he wants disciples who are committed. Mm -hmm. And he wants disciples who know what the cost is, what the blessing is. He just wants them to know. He doesn't want them to be blind followers. So I think what that speaks to us today is that if we're going to be Jesus' disciples, we really need to know what that means. It's not just, well, I go to church because I'm supposed to. I say my prayers because I think that's what we're supposed to do. You know, I do all of these things, but that there's a real investment and a commitment and a knowing what you're getting into. Yeah. Because discipleship is not easy. Not at at some point, you have to be the one to carry that gospel forward. And if you're not ready to do that, then you need to stop and say, well, what is the obstacle in my life that is keeping me from being a disciple? Yeah. You were once a slave, but no more. All comes it, together. It came together. It all comes together. That's what the Lord does. He's good that way. <laughs> all right, we will see you this weekend. 
Labor Day weekend, 23rd Sunday, first weekend of September, all of these things, all the things. put God first, everything else falls into place. Thank you.